Hey, what's up, guys? All right, so I'm recording in a different place than I usually do, so I'm sorry if the video looks a little weird or the lighting's off. I couldn't get it to, you know, exactly how I usually have it. But, uh, yeah, I'm just going to work with it for now. So, uh, after reading Attack on Titan Chapter Chapter 100, I'm, I'll be honest with you, I'm a little bit confused. Not confused about where the story's going, I'm just confused about how it should feel. Especially when it comes to the next immediate chapter, I'm confused about should I be excited or should I be worried about what's going to happen, especially when it comes to Eren. Now, uh, we'll just get into that later. Alright, so we start off the chapter, and uh, we see little Willie Ty Tiber, little Willie Tiber, that's what we start calling him, that little piece of shit. And we see that, uh, you know, back before he actually has a ceremony, you know, the announcement that he's making it that we saw in the last chapter. We see him meeting with that general that he basically put in charge of the entire army, basically. And uh, we see him basically saying that, yeah, they knew that Aaron was there. They knew that there's a possibility that people from Paris Island have infiltrated their own military. And pretty much this whole, this entire, like carnival this whole entire like festival that they're putting on with his announcement and everything it's basically just a trap it's just a trap to lure out all their enemies and basically he doesn't care he does not care if he dies if other Eldians die he doesn't care who gets caught in the middle of it as long as they can you know activate this trap in order to capture their enemies and once he said that i stopped caring about the character i stopped giving a shit about this character in general like seriously i don't care if he if my theory about him working with aaron is actually true or not which by the way this chapter kind of debunks my theory but I don't, we don't know we still don't know exactly what's going on yet but still i don't care if he actually is working with aaron or not i'm done with the character i fucked the character because okay if you're willing to sacrifice people if you're willing to sacrifice innocent people it doesn't matter if you hate them or not if you're willing to sacrifice innocent people who have nothing to do with this war just to trap your enemy, just an off chance to trap your enemy, then fuck you. I don't care if you're willing to go down with them. You're still willing to trap... It's just fucked up. He's just a fucked up character in general. So yeah, we see little Willie Tiber in a meeting with the general, and they're planning out their strategy for like the festival thing. He's like, all right, you know, we're going to gather all the people. We're going to gather our resources. We're going to gather like everyone, our allies, enemies. Everyone's going to be meeting in this one place. And we're basically going to put on the show. I'm going to be like the main... Tra I'm going to be the bait. I'm going to be the bait for this entire thing, and we're going to let our enemy attack. And this will be our declaration of war. We'll use them attacking me as a catalyst to, you know, gain people on our side, to gain our allies that we invited here to, you know, join, to convince to join our side in the, in the war. We're going to use my death in order to, like, bring them onto our side. Which, by the way, when they're planning this, and keep in mind, like I said earlier, keep in mind, William Tiber is planning on sacrificing innocent people, women, children, everything. He doesn't care who gets caught in the crossfire. As long as they can, you know, gather the, the allies they need for the war, he's one of those sacrifices many allies he needs to. It's the general. The general who's like a Marlegian, someone who's supposed to look down on the lighting, supposed to people who's supposed to look down and, you know, basically hate the people of Ymir. He shows more concern for the innocent Elidians that will be there and join the festival and, you know, at the speech than the fucking than William Tapper does. And he's supposed to be he's like a person he is a descendant of Ymir. He is a he is an Elidian himself and he does not show any concern. He even says later on in the chapter that he hates them, that he hates being born a lion, and that he's wished for the death of all the lions since he was born. Like, seriously, the characters are so fucked up, I'm actually glad he ended up dying at the end of the chapter. Or at least it seems he died. We'll get into that later. But yeah, we see them meeting up, and then we flash forward to the uh, back to the festival. We see him still giving off his speech, yada yada. We check in real quick with the two uh, time shifters that were captured in the last chapter, and we see that they've been put in like a... Uh, They've been put, basically put in a trap that's actually designed to hold Titans. It's like too small and too, it's like, well, it's too narrow for them to shift and it's too high up for them to climb. So they're basically trapped down there and their legs have been broken, their arms have been broken, but, you know, they're time shifters, so they'll heal eventually. But, uh, yeah, they're pretty much, tra they're pretty much trapped. Now, when I saw the trap and when they were talking about the soldier that actually led them to the trap, I started wondering, all right, is this actually, like, was this actually a soldier from Paradise Island who'd infiltrated the, Mar the Marlesian military? that led them to the trap or not, because apparently this wasn't like a trap that they just built. This was a trap that the Marlesians had for a long time now, designed specifically to take out time shifters. So if they, I don't know, if he actually was a Paradise Island soldier that infiltrated the trap or infiltrated the Marlesian army, how would he have gained that information? How would he have that information in order to like basically know that that trap is there, that it exists in order to lead them to it? So it has me thinking that maybe the Marlegians are trying to take out the current shifters because they're starting to think that they don't trust them or not. I don't know. It's like it just has me it has me guessing as to exactly who the enemy is for the Titan shifters on the Marlegian side. But yeah, after we're done with them, we go back to you know well, what's his name, William Tyre, Will, Little Willie. He's you know still giving off a speech. Yada yada. No one cares about him. 
Then we check in with Aaron and we see him and Reiner. You know, the two of them are actually having a heartfelt conversation. Aaron basically comes out and says, Reiner, I understand everything you went through now. Like, you, you knew the last time we saw Reiner and Aaron, you know, face to face. Aaron just wanted to kill him. Aaron did not give a shit about Reiner's personality or anything. He didn't care about his feelings or anything. He just wanted to kill him. But Aaron comes out and says that basically after living here on uh, the Marlesian Island for four years, or supposedly four years, however long he's been here infiltrating them, he's come to realize exactly how tortured Reiner was when he had to, when he had to infiltrate Paris Island. Because he realized that he basically had the same idea or the same mindset that Reiner did when he first got there. That the people on the other island, you know, on the other side of the ocean, they are enemies. They are evil. They are just like, they're the devils. And it doesn't matter how long I had to be here, I would never stop hating them. But once he got here and saw how, you know, there's different types of people, how there's good people and bad people, like, he became friends with Falco. So he's like, all right, there's there's good people here. I don't exactly hate you guys. I can understand exactly how you were conflicted and how you kind of, you, you know, lost your mind a little bit, Reiner, back on the Paris Island. How you were conflicted by, you know, basically continue your mission but reiner actually comes back and says no don't forgive me because aaron basically tells him that he forgives reiner for everything and reiner's like no don't forgive me your mom died because of me like reiner comes out and completely confesses to aaron he's like listen annie and berto they wanted to fuck off they after our friend marcel died they wanted to leave and i was the one to push them to stay i was the one to push them to continue the mission if it wasn't for me your mom would not die that day which Aaron basically just gets up, shakes in Reiner's hands, like, you know what? I still forgive you. I still forgive you for everything because I can understand exactly why you would have that drive to complete your mission. Because you had to fight for your people. And that's basically what Aaron's like, and I had to continue to fight for my people too. And that's when we see Aaron shift into his fucking founding titan form. Which, alright. Remember how at the beginning of the video I said that uh, I'm not exactly sure how I would feel about the next chapter, especially when it comes to Aaron? It's because of this. Because not only does Aaron kill possibly Falco and Reiner when he shifts into his time form, he also kills every single innocent person that was inside that building that they were in the basement of when he shifts into his time form. Now, I don't give a fuck about the fact that he killed a little Willie Tyler, the Tyber. I don't give a fuck about that, and he's probably not dead yet, and I don't know, we'll talk about him in a second. But, uh, yeah, the fact that Aaron just basically killed all those people without, without any second thought, it just, it, I'm not sure exactly how to feel about the character anymore, because... I, I, now I want to know. Now I want to know exactly what happened to him in this four-year time skip. Because the last time we saw Aaron back, you know, back on Paris Island before this time skip, before this new arc started, the Aaron that we saw back then would never have done this. He would never have sacrificed innocent lives to complete a mission. He would have found a different way. He would try to find some other way to complete his mission or to get, or to accomplish the goal they needed to accomplish. He would not have killed innocent people just without a second thought. And the fact that Aaron just becomes so, like, I, I can't even think of the word, like, unhinged or like uncaring about innocent lives i just i'm not exactly sure how to care about the character so i want to see i want to see i want the next arc to focus on the entire four-year time skip of what happened on paris island what happened to our main cast to see exactly how they come to this far like did mikasa die or something i want to see what happened to him to make this character such like because i liked Aaron. i really liked Aaron. Aaron was my favorite character before the time skip and now after this chapter i can't honestly say i like the character anymore i can't honestly say that i'm rooting for the character to win anymore at this point, there's not really any character, well, I still like Armin and Mikasa, Levy, you know, basically, I can't say I like Aaron anymore. I can't say I like Aaron any more than I like the Marvel Legion at this point. As, to me, at this point, they're both pieces of shit. So, I don't know, like, I'd like to see something. Something to justify Aaron being this way so I can actually justify liking the character again. But yeah, that's pretty much all that happens in the chapter. Aaron transforms into his Titan form, he kills little William Tiber in front of everyone, which, by the way... I'm questioning whether or not he actually did kill him because if he did kill him, that would mean will that that would mean that William Tiber didn't have the like the hammerhead Titan ability, which you would think the head of the Tiber family would actually be the one with the Titan Shifter ability, not someone else. So if he actually is dead, that would mean that someone else in the family has it, not just him. It could be one of his siblings or one of his kids. We don't know. But yeah, I don't know. Like like you said, because like I mean, like I said, you would think that the head of the Tiber family would be the one with the Titan ability. And since he knew all this information, he knew the secret history and everything, I figured that he had to have, like, gained that knowledge from the Titan ability being passed on to him from his previous ancestor, like his father, his grandfather, whoever had it before him. But no, I mean, if he actually is dead, and which he said that he would die given the speech, that would mean that he doesn't have the Titan ability, which means someone else has to. And I'm actually looking forward to see what actually has and seeing where that goes. I'm looking forward to see what happens with Reiner and Falco. I doubt Falco's going to die. Like, we put too much importance on his character for him to just, like, be killed off like that. 
I think maybe uh, Reiner's going to be injured or Falco's going to be injured to the point where Reiner gives him the injection. And then Falco, then he passes on the armor titan ability to Falco. Which, by the way, we didn't talk about Falco in this video. Falco, Falco, it feels exactly the way I do about Aaron. He's like, he's not sure how to take it. He's like, fuck, I liked you. I liked you. And you betrayed my trust like this. What the fuck? And there's even a moment where he talks, where he thinks that him and Reiner might be able to take out Aaron themselves. Of course, Reiner kind of just, like, breaks down at that point. Like, he starts apologizing to Aaron and tries to, like, basically ask for death. Which Falco just kind of sits there and just, like, what the fuck is going on? But, yeah, that's pretty much all that happens with Falco in this chapter. And uh, that's pretty much all that happens in the chapter. But, uh, yeah, that's it. Can't wait to see what happens in the next chapter. Uh, like I said, I'm a little bit worried. I'm a little bit confused. I'm a little bit excited. I'm all over the place when it comes to this chapter and the next one. But, uh, yeah, that's it for the video. Thanks for watching. I hope you enjoyed If you did, drop me a like, subscribe to the channel. I greatly appreciate it. Comment down below with your thoughts and uh, catch you guys later. Peace.